Good evening, everyone. This is Bishop Kehar Woods of Covenant Church in Berkeley, California, and you are here on The Quest Facebook Live, YouTube, and Instagram Bible Study. Welcome to this social media platform where we come together every week to learn the Word of God, and it is so good to see you. I'm telling you, you are in the best place at the best time. Uh, God has a word for us tonight that is going to bless us tremendously, and I believe that uh, there uh, is no coincidence in God. I believe that God has directed us to be here together tonight, to spend valuable time together in the Word of God, on laying out and unpacking the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So God bless you tonight, so come on in the room and get comfortable uh, get your family together, your friends, start up your watch parties. Uh, you don't want to miss uh, this word tonight, the evacuation plan that's continuing in our fire drill series. So uh, get ready uh, for a word that's going to bless you. Get your Bibles. If you still got your, your leather back Bible and if you still have uh, your paperback Bibles, get your highlighters, get your notepads. You know how we used to do. You got your, your yellow ink, uh, highlighters and your pink highlighters and your, your, your light green highlighters. You know what I'm talking about. Get them ready. And if not, right there on your tablet, your computer, your smartphone, let's get ready to go into the Word of God. I want to tell you that this is an exciting time, an exciting time to be alive. Uh, you say, Bishop, with all that's going on, absolutely, because as believers, we see God at work. We see God moving in a mighty, a mighty way. So uh, get your Bibles in your hand, get prepared. Uh, to uh, get into the word and we're just going to stomp on the devil's head tonight and we're going to clear victory. I need you to share, like, and invite. Will you do that tonight? Uh, all of our covenant members, remember, we've got a challenge before the year ends, 2020, we've got to win one soul to the Lord. Where you at? Have you brought that soul to Christ? Have you brought that soul? And it starts with inviting them to church, inviting them to Bible study. There are Plenty of people online, 7 billion people in this world, several billion of them online. Can you imagine that? Several billion of them online. Uh, and we have the opportunity to propel the gospel out to each and every one of them. So uh, who knows who God's sending tonight? To all our first time guests and our returning guests, to our Covenant Church members, we greet you and we're so glad to have you. You're never a stranger here. You are always our friend. So get your Bibles in your hand and let's declare tonight. Uh, we've been doing this uh, for years and, and uh, we declare because we believe that the word of God uh, is the unadulterated truth, that the word of God is the only way uh, to heaven. So tonight we believe in the infallibility of the word of God, that God is uh, whom he says he is. Amen? So let's lift it up tonight and say, this is my Bible. It is called the Word of God. It is called the Sword of the Spirit. It is my spiritual weapon. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Devil, I am armed and dangerous in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Um, tonight, we're going to do uh, what we call in uh, uh, seminarian circles, uh, expository teaching, expository teaching. So tonight, we're going uh, to lay out the Word of God, Old Testament and New Testament, and we're going to connect our theme uh, tonight. So I think uh, you, you, you word-hungry folks that love uh, five courses in your meal, you're going to get it tonight. Uh, so uh, get ready. It's going to be great. But I want I want to begin uh, by uh, talking about uh, the idea of being prepared. Over the last few, few weeks, I've been uh, doubling down on the idea of preparedness, preparedness, preparedness in life, whether that be uh, uh, academically, scholastically, uh, whether that be entrepreneurially. Uh, whether that be uh, in, in your, your particular career and your vocational uh, uh, set point, uh, uh, standpoint, being ready 
is a very, very important thing, uh, preparedness, and as well as your, your spiritual life, uh, uh, being prepared for the things of God, uh, the next shift, the next move of God. God is, is a, a very fluid God. He's very uh, dynamic. He is not static. Uh, he is always moving. He's like a, a river. He, he's always flowing. So in order to be an effective Christian, you must uh, have some fluidity with, to you. You must be in a place where uh, you are nimble in the spirit uh, and able to move with the cloud. Whatever God would have you to do uh, and uh, to get you to your promised land, to get you to the destination he has for your life, you gotta be, you gotta be ready for that. Even, even in your family, uh, there is uh, preparedness. Preparedness in the natural, particularly with natural disasters and things that come up but for what God is doing in your family, in your marriage. It has to do with anticipation, anticipating good things. I hear the words of Jeremiah, where Jeremiah says that my thoughts towards you are good and not evil to bring you to an expected end. Some translation says a glorious end, a divine end, or a favorable end. So in other words, whatever it may be, glorious, divine, favorite, expected, as long as God expects it for us, then it's a good thing. Amen? So I, I want you to, to grasp that tonight. I want you to grasp that idea that uh, there is a difference between preparation and preparedness. Uh, I, I want you to catch that, that line of demarcation there. A difference between preparation and preparedness. Preparation means I'm getting ready. Preparedness says I'm, says I'm staying ready. And I, I believe that you come to a place of spiritual maturity. I believe you come to a place in your life where you're ready to move out of the preparing state and move into the preparedness state. Now, doesn't that, doesn't that even feel better? Doesn't that even sound better? That I am so close to uh, God's plan and will being unfolded in my life uh, that I'm prepared for it. I anticipate it. I'm looking for it. That's a very important thing. So over the last uh, several weeks, uh, all over the Western states, particularly on the West Coast, particularly in California, and even here in my home in Northern California, uh, we have been uh, dealing with an unprecedented uh, firestorm, uh, the worst in uh, history. And for those of us that have been in the Bay Area for some time, that's a very tall thing to say because we remember uh, uh, the uh, firestorms of, of the, the early 90s. We remember uh, just a few years, whole towns uh, being burned out and whole subdivisions being burned out. So the idea of the worst uh, than that is, is almost unfathomable. Well, uh, it is it is almost to a place where we can't even wrap our our minds around it. So, um, with that, uh, there's been much talk in our church. We've we've uh, uh, we're putting together with uh, with the help of our dear uh, brother uh, uh, Richard. Uh, we're we're putting together a, a whole idea of getting people prepared, getting people prepared for shifting and changing. So uh, uh, let's take that and, and transport that into a spiritual context. As a church, inherently, we are getting people prepared by shifting and changing. And, and, and germane to uh, preparedness is having a preparedness kit. And I told you over the last few weeks of, of, of the Quest Bible study how to get your preparedness kit together. You've got to have some, some faith and some virtue and some goodness. You've you got to have all those things to be uh, prepared and to be ready. Um, but in addition to a preparedness kit, you've got to have an evacuation plan. You've got to have an evacuation plan. So what is, what is an evacuation plan? An evacuation plan is a plan to escape or to move away from a place suddenly. Are you hearing me? Uh, evacuation means a plan of escape or the ability to, and, and or the ability to move uh, swiftly when something imminent is coming upon you. All right, so 
I, I think it is it is fair to say that as believers, our message, our main message, and I, I believe that uh, many of us as, as pastors, as teachers uh, from the word of God, uh, and many of you have been on uh, you, you get to go to several ser services on Sunday. You get to come to the Cove and you get to go hear uh, uh, some, some national speakers and different ones right there on Facebook platforms. But I want you, I'm going to ask you a question. Out of all of that teaching that you've heard, has any of that teaching or any substantial amount of that teaching prepared you for the evacuation? Mm-hmm. Has it prepared you for the next move? Uh, undoubtedly, much of that teaching uh, was a spiritual healing, and it was uh, how to adapt ourselves here on earth. It is, it is, how, it is really how for us to be more se successful in this earthly situation. Am, am I right about it? Uh, in other words, uh, how to anchor our address here, how to, to manage our environment and our geography here. Must, much of that teaching is anchoring us to earth, and it, and it does not, uh, in any, to any significant degree, it does, does not aim us towards our ultimate goal. And that is to evacuate. We call it the rapture as believers. We call it the translation of the saints. To evacuate out of this world. So, so as, as a pastor, I want to apologize to you. I want to apologize. Because my message is, of course, are to, to help you deal with uh, the, the present uh, uh, circumstances that are in the earth. But uh, the great bulk of my message, as was the great bulk of Jesus' message, was to prepare us to evacuate, to get up out of here. So as we see the day approaching, that is not the time for us to anchor down and on our earthly address. And that doesn't mean not to buy a home, not to fix up your house, not to take care of your assets. But it does mean that you are not so anchored to the earth that when the Lord comes back, uh -huh, you, can't be, you can't be caught up because you're too tethered to the earth. You, you don't want to be like a kite on a string uh -huh, trying to go up, but the earth has you held down. You don't, you don't want to be like a balloon in, 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 in someone's hand that when you're trying to go higher, uh, you're held back through, through the cares of this life through the worldliness, through sinfulness, through ungodliness. Uh, am, I, am I teaching you tonight? So in other words, uh, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Uh, uh, and, and even the people that we love, our loved ones, our friends, our acquaintances, our co-workers, the person we see uh, uh, at the grocery store, in the neighborhood, you know what, we love them, but the only way for us to spend eternity together, to evacuate together, is through the rapture. So, uh, brothers and sisters, tonight, we're going to talk about that evacuation. We've been talking about ring the alarm. We've been talking about fire drills. Tonight, we're going to talk about the evacuation. So, uh, in, any good evacuation plan uh, has to have steps or predetermined steps in order for that evacuation plan to work. So, I'm going to give you six steps to your spiritual evacuation plan, meaning how are we going to get up out of here? Because if you have any vigilance in the spirit, you would recognize, and I've taught this to you over several weeks. If you want to get the lessons, they're right there on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. If you uh, want to evacuate from here and you have any spiritual vigilance, you would recognize that uh, things are aligning in this earth in such a way that biblical prophecy is coming uh, to fruition before our very eyes. A few uh, last week, I told you that Joel chapter Joel chapter two popped out in my face through the fire storms and the smoke that was in the air, where the sun was darkened and and the moon, the reddish moon, sun and moon was turned to blood. I believe from from an allegorical sense, I believe that it was these type of cataclysmic and, and uh, a cosmic type of events that Joel was talking about. Uh, and Jesus alludes to them as well. So we're going to get into it 
today. Wars, rumors of wars brewing all over the world, political upheaval, and because the love of many shall wax cold, uh, people's love uh, denying uh, people health care, denying people uh, uh, citizenship uh, for those, those DACA uh, young people that have been living here their whole life coming in from, from Mexico. Uh, it, is, it is so important for us to, to recognize the times that we're living in. Don't you blink. This is not the time to be on recess. This is not the time for us to give up, but this is the time for us to prepare for the coming of the Lord. All right, let's start our, our, our plan here. All right, our, our preparedness plan, step number one, and we're gonna check it off as we go, is prepare ahead of time. Prepare ahead of time. Don't wait until the last minute to plan your evacuation. Don't plan until the last minute to, to plan your evacuation. All right, let's go to Jeremiah chapter number 8 and 20. Got a lot of scriptures tonight. As I told you, it, it will be an extrapolation of the text and as we exegete the text. Don't you love those words? A lot of, lot of money in uh, theology school to get that, so I'm going to use it. Hello. So here it is. Jeremiah 8 and 20, King James Version, said the harvest is past and the summer is ended and we are not saved. All right. Jeremiah speaking uh, in behalf as he prophesies of the children of Israel in their captivities. But here today, this scripture is used uh, even in the New Testament to outline that the summer is past, the harvest is past, and the harvest season uh, to the uh, children of Israel was uh, usually the season where uh, they pulled up what they had planted in another season. Now, I, I taught you that, that uh, seasons, it, it, what he's giving a picture of is seasons that are coming and going, and we're still not saved. Now, today is the, the first day of fall. Huh? The summer has just ended, and the writer said, and we're still not saved. Now, I, I want to I wanna pose a question, and it's not hypothetical. With as much as we see and as much as we have in the Word, and we learn in the Word, why are so many of us not yet saved? Some of you on, uh, uh, on this broadcast, uh, no doubt, uh, haven't fully given your life to God, and you have an interest. But I want to tell you that the Bible gives us an urgency, an urgency that says summer is past, y'all. The harvest has already come by. In other words, we're going season after season. You're doing the same thing that you were doing 10 years ago, 15 years ago. The same excuses that you were using 12 years ago are the same excuses you are now. What are, are what, what you waiting for? Are you, are you waiting for something better to come along? I, 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 what, are you, what are you waiting for? Are you, are you waiting to squeeze out? that last bit of sin, but I thought you did that last time. I, I thought you did that last time when you said, Lord, if you, if you deliver me, then, then I'll live for you. I, 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 maybe I'm talking to myself. I, I thought I did that last time where, God, if you make a way for me, I, I'll, I'll give my life to you. But here it is, another summer's ended, and we still ain't right. Well, I'm coming down your street too, believers. Hello. When are we going to stay, get out of the, graduate from the spiritual kindergarten? When are we going to get out of the spiritual preschool and really get saved? In other words, we cannot be spiritual double agents, huh? And, and in this day of, of uh, Facebook and this altar world, uh, some of us show why we can't witness. Some of us show why we can't invite anybody to church and tell anybody about the Lord. Because uh, what we put out there does not match what we do, uh, what we say we are as Christians. And I'm not just poking, back, poking on that. You know it for yourself. In other words, why aren't we saved with all of the preaching and, and all of the, uh, the promulgating of the gospel and all that we know of God and all we say about God? Why haven't we fully given ourselves to God? Let me say uh, something about God. God is like uh, uh, any man or woman in, in, a, in a marriage, uh, even more so. God says, uh, either I'm God of all, uh-huh, or not God at all. Did y'all catch that? Huh? Either I'm God of all, or I'm not God at all. You can't 
be a, a half saved, kind of saved. Maybe I'm saved. I don't know if I'm saved. You got to know, like the old people used to say it, you got to know that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. Hello, somebody. That's one of my, that's one of my old school Christians here. So, all right. So let's move on. Romans 13, 11. He says, and that knowing the time that now it is high, time to awake out of sleep. Reminds me of do the right thing. Wake up. Huh? Wake up out of your sleep. For now is your salvation nearer than when you first believed. So Paul is, uh, uh, he is uh, emphatically speaking to Christians, saying it's time to quit sleeping, Christians. You want to know how uh, we miss our moment? Huh? Uh, our moment is missed because we're asleep. And that's what uh, that a connection and a cohesion, uh, a correlation between Jeremiah and uh, uh, Romans is uh, showing us that we miss our opportunity and we got to wait for the next train. Huh? Have you ever missed the bus, missed the train and said, oh, my God, missed your ride huh? and had to wait? It was irritating. But let me tell you, when it comes to the evacuation, the rapture, you know, another bus is not coming. Uh, another ride is not coming. If you miss it, you'll be like those virgins of Matthew 25. Five of them wise, five of them foolish, five of them fell asleep. Uh, when the bridegroom came, they woke up and they were not ready because they did not keep oil in their lamp and did not keep their lamps burning bright. So believers, don't get caught slipping. Uh -huh. Stay with God. Hold on to God. Stay in the word. Press into God. The pandemic is not a recess for us, but it's for us to know that your salvation, check out what the word of God says, your salvation is closer than when you first believed. And right now, oh my God, I feel like shouting. I've been preaching this the last few weeks. He says, I tell you, today is the day of salvation. Huh? This is the day and it is the time of God's favor. Oh, I'm going to run that back. It is the time of God's favor. So you are saying that God's coming back to us, but during the time, I'm going to shout y'all, during the time where we have great upheaval, the time where our salvation is, 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 no, is, is, soon, is closer than when we first believed, are you telling me that God says that's going to be time of great favor? Huh? That's going to be a time of God doing great things. Let's reset in Corinthians 6. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. So in other words, God's Jesus' return is closer than when you first believed. You're one step closer to heaven than when you first believed. You're one day closer to the coming of the Lord than when you first believed. But look at what he says. During this time, he calls it the time of God's favor. Can you imagine that? That out of all of the times, uh, all of, of, of biblical history and, and biblical time, that God says that the time that we're living in is the time of God's favor. I think you better reach up, reach out, and grab that favor because God's saying, I'm going to do some things so incredible in your life and bring revival so in this life, this time that you're living in, that it's going to blow your mind. I heard the Bible say it like this, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. What a what a thing. All right. So let's go on. The second thing, uh, the second thing on your checklist is recognize the conditions. Evacuation plan. Recognize the condition. This is good. Huh? Amen. Luke 21, 25. Let me read it for you. Right out the Bible. Right out of Bible. It leaps up off the pages of the Bible. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. All right, let me stop right there. Jesus, in Luke's redaction of uh, the Lord's uh, uh, sermon on the Mount of Olives, 
Luke is recording Jesus' words, and he gives us a few things to look like, look for in the end times. There will be signs, cosmological signs in uh, the universe, uh, in the heavenlies. You'll look up and you will see signs. There will be nations that will be in anguish and perplexed, and there will be roaring and the tossing of the sea, tsunamis, uh, hurricanes, the worst hurricane season on record. I was listening uh, and watching television the other day. They said that we've had so many hurricanes in just the last few months, uh, la last few weeks really, that they've run out of names to give the hurricanes. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Uh, environmental conditions, uh, a global warming. I, I, there, I, I looked at the television and they said that uh, a 400, are you hearing me? A 400 mile piece of ice in Antarctica is melting. Are you hearing me? And it's causing sea levels to rise. Um, in, in our area here in the North, Northern California, temperatures have been regularly two degrees above averages for over ever since they've been recording uh, temperatures. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you hearing me today? Uh, some say that it's not real. Well, I want to tell you it is real. And, and, and let, me, let me take a little, little pause for the cause here. That uh, as uh, there are so many people say, well, global warming is not real. Global warming, uh -huh, environmental concerns are the place where the Bible and science connect. You can't get this nowhere else but at, at, on the quest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it again. Global warming and environmental concerns is where the Bible and science connect. How are they going to be tossing and roaring of seas uh, like never before? How are they going to be sun, moon, stars, and cosmological events? Because again, uh, if you didn't know this or not, I know my fishermen know this, that the, the pool, the magnetic pool of the, of the moon works on the waters. And that's what gives you your ebb and your flow, your tide. Didn't, didn't know that, huh? You say, yes, I did, Bishop. So what that means when things are happening in the heavenlies uh -huh, with the moon, it affects the waters. You didn't hear that. So when we start getting tsunamis and, and beginning water levels that are high, it's because something is happening in the cosmos that is being reflected here on earth. It's a connection and a cohesion between science and the word of God. These things are happening. Yes, global warming is happening. Of course, that is a cosmological event with the sun. Y'all don't even think about it like that, huh? With the sun, the moon, and the stars. The ozone layer is being eaten away because of carbon emissions, uh, oil that was in the ground that was supposed to stay in the ground, but we burned it in our cars. I'm not trying to be on a platform. I'm just trying to show you how the word of God works. It is uh, the sun is literally heating the things up. The moon is affecting the waves, which calling, causing the tossing of winds. All these things are happening in the stars. Wait for the asteroids. Wait for the meteor. I know it sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, but I didn't make it up. It's right out of the Bible. So let's move. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. You have, I have heard for ourselves, our own leader, the most powerful man in the world, said that this is the plague, that this is the worst ever. Uh-huh. And so many people are acting like they're under, under anesthesia. <laughs> Even Christians. Because they don't know what their Bible says. If the most powerful man in the world says this is the plague and this thing is, uh, is uncontrollable, that brings about terror in the world. He says, well, I, I didn't want to tell it because I didn't want everybody to get scared. But he ended up coming out anyway. And that's just what the Bible said. People will faint from terror. huh? If you think you've seen something in the world, you haven't seen yet. You said the coronavirus has got to be the worst thing that could ever happen. I believe God's going to deliver us, but there are going to be other things that will come. 
So what that says to us as believers, we must redouble our efforts and live for God. Huh? Let's move on. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Things in heaven going to fall in the earth. And at that time, they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption draw is nigh. Now, uh, from an eschatological platform, what this scripture is talking about is the second coming of Christ. Uh, uh, but, it, but the second coming of Christ, the prelude to it starts with us. There is the rapture, we call it that the evacuation, and then there's the second coming of Christ to the earth. That's for my, for my, my, my theologians out there. But the preparation and the events that happen to the coming of Christ are happening with us right now. So in other words, we are not ignorant of the times or the seasons. What does he say? He says, but when this happens, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Redemption means a word, means to snatch out, means to buy out. So in other words, our evacuation comes. So what we should be doing is not trying to tether ourselves to the earth. That doesn't mean that you do nothing. Paul is very clear to the, to the Thessalonians, meaning you keep working, you keep g gathering, you keep doing what you have to do, but you keep one eye looking for the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, for those who look for him, will he appear and come again the second time. Verse 29, he told them in this parable, Luke 21 and 29, look at the fig tree and all the trees Jesus here uses an agricultural parable, something simple for us to understand an incredibly uh, 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 deep thought. He says, look at the fig tree and all the trees. You can see for yourselves and know that the summer is near. In Palestine, when figs came forth, they began to see green shoots come from uh, the fig trees. And that would let them know not only that figs are coming, but would let them know that the summer was coming too. So what Jesus is, is doing here is he's setting up a visual imagery that will let us know that when you see things, do not huh, doubt what you see. Do not dismiss what you see. If you see the shoots of a fig coming forth from the branch, you know summer is coming. When there are earthquakes in diverse places, when, when uh, the, whack, the love of many wax cold, where men, a nation rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, meaning mindsets against mindsets, what that must tell you is that the fig is about to come on the vine and the summer is almost here. The coming of the Lord Jesus uh, is, is imminent. His, his, the rapture is right around the corner. When they sprout, Leaves, you can see for yourself that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. These things are happening ever uh, since Jesus was here on earth in his first advent. These things have been happening, and they must happen. But God's word uh, is the greatest force in all of the universe. There is no place uh, within uh, God that is outside of God's realm. And he has placed his will in his word. And his word has come nigh to us, and it has healed us. And he says, heaven and earth will pass away. This earth that we're living on, that we're anchoring on, that we're drilling down deep trying to set foundations on, they will pass away. Even the heavens as we see it, the moon, the sun, the stars, they will pass away. But God's word will never pass away. So what does he tell us as we're getting ready for this evacuation? Verse 34, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and the anxieties of life. All right. When people are trying to draw out a sorrow, they be, they carouse, uh-huh, and they get drunk. Not just with Hennessy and 
<laughs> and not with your favorite uh, alcohol and, 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 and what you like to drink and, 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 and what many of us like a glass of, you, you like a glass of wine and you like all these different things. He said, but many times when people do that, they're doing that to relax their minds from things that are happening. Huh? And, and this is not a Bible class and whether you drink or not, uh, uh, drink wine or not as, as believers, of course, you know that we have to be temperate in all things. But let me tell you this, that it's very, very important for you to recognize, don't get overwhelmed to say, I'm going to get a drink. I don't know what's going on here. huh? Now is the time for you to be sober and to wake up. huh? Now is the time for you to shake yourself uh, because the Lord is coming soon. And don't get overwhelmed the, with the anxieties of life right here in the Bible. Uh, the, many of our psychologists and, and our psychiatrists, many of our therapists are saying that Many people are dealing with a sense of anxiety and fatigue, pandemic fatigue, and particularly as we move into the fall and, and move into the winter with the, the normal flu season. Some are saying it's going to be the worst on record. I, 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 can you imagine that? Uh, in uh, 1918, uh, uh, the Spanish flu killed millions of people. And, and for these things to leak out, it says to us, we can't be anxious about this life because, of course, there is enough to make us anxious. I'm not talking about what I think is going to happen. I'm talking about what I know is going to happen because it's right here in the Word, and we're seeing it right before our eyes. Huh? And the day shall close on you suddenly like a trap. The day, well, so in other words, when the evacuation comes, it's just like a fire. It will come upon you suddenly and it will close like a trap. In other words, you've been thinking about getting saved, thinking about getting right, getting close to God. You've been there, done that, but don't let the, the trap close on you because you won't be able to get in. Be, uh, for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch. Pray that you may be able to escape. What is the word? Uh, escape here is the word evacuate. Oh my God, it's all tying together. Pray that you will be able to evacuate. That you'll be able to get on up out of here when the Lord comes. So uh, brothers and sisters, uh, in your evacuation plan, you've got to stay in a position where you are uh, recognizing the conditions. You are recognizing what's going on. In other words, you've got to recognize that I, I see smoke, and where there is smoke, there is what? Fire. In other words, you've got to recognize uh, the condition of the world, that at any given time there can be an incendiary event naturally, but there also can be a time, there will be a time where the Lord's going to rapture us and to evacuate us out of here. Well, as believers, that's not a scary thing. That's what the Bible calls, it, calls our blessed hope. That's what the Bible calls our blessed hope. And, and, and of course, we frame our, our life up. We think about the things that are happening in our world. And, and as believers, we are concerned with uh, a social injustice. Uh, with, with, as believers, we're concerned about human and, and health needs. We, we are concerned uh, about environmental conditions. We, we are concerned about the, the economic uh, 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 solubleness of uh, this world. We are, we are concerned about things that are going on in our streets and in our, in our education. But I want to tell you, uh, don't act like you don't know the summer is, is coming. Make it the best it can be here. But brothers and sisters, let us make sure we prepare for getting there. Somebody shout evacuate. So here it is. If um, he, he says to us that be always on watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. All right, let's move. Next thing on your list. Let's check it out. You got to know... You got to know where you're going. Huh? You got to know where you're going. Now, let me ask this question. How many of us really know where we're going? Huh? 
a lot of times in our churches, we we talk about a whole lot of other things. We if, if we we're preaching about our haters and preaching about those those type of things, then uh, certainly we get the idea that our our connection is, is God with God is, is very uh, earth centric. It, it is it is very uh, a cosmopolitan. How about that? That's a, that's a great word. Word. Uh, it is it is very connected to this world. But I want to tell you, the Bible says concerning us as believers that those that have been born again, we are pilgrims and we are strangers. In other words, in this world, uh, we are not led by the prince of the power of the air. In this, that is Satan. But rather, we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. In other words, we got citizenship in heaven. In other words, we don't have citizenship in the devil's kingdom anymore. And, and, and that is more than just being a citizen of the United Kingdom or, or being a, a citizen of the United States, uh, of England or Scotland or, or, or some a nation around the world. Uh, we have citizenship in heaven. So you got to know where you're going because if you have a sense of where you're going, it'll give you more hope down here. Someone said, Bishop, you Christians, you are weak uh, because you believe in some ethereal heaven and, 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 and you live uh, in this, this type of fake odyssey world. But I want to tell you that don't take my, my dream away. Don't, don't wake me. I'm dreaming. I, I gotta, I'm, I'm going way back, New Jack, way back. You know, uh, it is so important for you to recognize, well, if it is a dream, it's a great dream. Huh? But couple that dream with what we see happening before our eyes in the word of God and couple that with our faith, uh, then it lets us know that it, it is more than possible. Uh, uh, it, is, it is probable and probably preferable that one of these days, Jesus is going to crack the sky and he's going to say, come my people. But you got to know where you're going. So I want to give you a little, little something to help you know where you're going. St. John chapter 14, verse 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Check out the, check out the words of Jesus. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Let, let, let me Let's, let's, let's break that in, into to, to smaller pieces, into smaller morsels. He says, don't let your heart be troubled, first of all. Similar to uh, Jesus' words in the book of St. Luke, where he tells us, do not be anxious in life when you see these things. Jesus tells his disciples, and you've got you've to look at the scenario and the parameter, the panorama. Jesus is there in the upper room with his disciples just before his impending death. And uh, the Bible says he speaks to them and he says, let not your heart be troubled. The reason why he says that is because there will be trouble. There will be trouble that's coming, but trouble will come. But what Jesus is dealing with there is he's dealing with their psychology of how they perceive and view the trouble. In other words, the world views the trouble with doom and gloom and no hope. But as believers, believers, we view trouble as a sign that our redemption is drawing nigh. It, it's a sign that the Lord is coming back again. So if you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house, verse number two, for in my father's house are many mansions. The word Many mansions, that, that, that compound, uh, means in my father's house, there is much room. There is much room. Talking about in heaven, there is much room. There is uh, room for you and you room for me. You, you're not going to go to heaven and, and get a big mansion or a big house. I know some of you thought you were going to be kicking it. And, you know, you find it was going to be on MTV Cribs. That, that's Dayton, too. Huh? <laughs> you, you, thought, you thought you were going, you know, we're going to be balling out of control in, in terms of a big house. You've always wanted one. Well, I want to tell you, God's going to give you something better than a big house. He's made room for you. 
meaning that you are accepted in the beloved, that there's enough room. Can you think uh, uh, can you think about how many billion people have lived upon the earth? And out of that, how many Christians have lived upon the earth? I want to tell you that there's room for past, present, and future. If you're not saved, there's room for you. And it starts with room at the foot of the cross. The cross is the place where it all happens. If it were not so, I would have told you. If I, if I wasn't doing it, I would have told you. I will go and prepare a place for you. Talking about your evacuation plan, you got to know where you're going. I'm going to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. This is an incredible word. Here, here it is. Jesus says, I'm going, getting it all prepared. There's much room for you, but I'm coming back for you. Out of all the messages that we preach, all my covenant ministers, out of every message that we preach, there has to be some element of encouraging the people of God that Jesus is coming again. That is his greatest promise. His greatest promise is not a new house or a, a new car or you, for you to buy a Louis uh, Vuitton bag or to wear some red bottom shoes or uh, uh, to wear a, 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 a particular uh, brand name shirt or to wear uh, Armani suits. It, 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 it is not, that is not the promise. The promise is not a husband or a wife or, or, or children. And these are all wonderful blessings here on earth. But what he promised was to prepare a place for us and that he would come and receive us unto himself, and that where he is, we will be there also. In other words, where we're going is to be in the presence of Jesus. So as believers, the abiding Holy Spirit is just a prelude to a coming attraction. We are in heavenly places through the Holy Spirit. So spiritually, we are connected to heaven. Are y'all ready to shout yet? We are connected to heaven spiritually, but one day, as the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we are going to know even as we are known. My God, it's a wonderful thing. I told you this and I'm going to tell you again. It's one thing for me to know the Lord, but it's another thing for me to be known of the Lord. I begin to, to think about the construct that many of us talk about in life. We say we found the Lord. We found the Lord. Well, I want to tell you, we didn't find, find the Lord. Uh -huh. are, are you hearing me? <laughs> because the Lord was not lost. The Lord found us. Hello, my God. The Lord found us right where we were at in our depression. The Lord found us right where we were at in the lowest point of our life and in the broken places of our lives. The Lord found us when it seems like we were shattered in the thousands of little pieces. The Lord found us when we were about to make that hit of the crack pipe or put that needle in, in our arms. The Lord found us in, the, in a jail cell or, or in a homeless encampment. The Lord found us because he is not lost. That's good. My God, you better lift your hand right where you're at and say, God, thank you for finding me. God, thank you that you always had your eye on me. God, thank you that you never left me and that even when I can't see you, I know you're there. That even when I can't trace you, I can still trust you. Can somebody help me preach this and teach this lesson today? My God. All right. What else do you need in your, in your kit? I mean, what else do you need for your plan, your evacuation plan? You got to have an escape route. You got to have an escape route. What's the escape route? St. John 14, let's continue with that. Verse number four, NIV version. You know the way to the place where I am going. Very profound. You know the way. Check out how many times Jesus uses the word way. And the word way literally means uh, a, a course. You know how to get there. It does not take a PhD in Christianity to get there. You don't have to have a master's degree in the Bible to get there. You don't, you don't have to have a bachelor's degree in, in theology to get there. You know the way. And it is, it is simply by yielding your life to Christ and inviting him to be your savior. But Thomas, one of his disciples were there in the text. Check it out. He says... Lord, we don't know where you're going. 
So how can we know the way? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. What does that mean? The escape route is through Jesus. Huh? Jesus says, I am the way. In other words, I am the path. I am the truth. I am the inherent truth. The words that I speak are true. And I am the life. John the Revelator said that he is the light of life, meaning that he is the very origin of life. That trifecta shows us that he is the way to, to get to, to heaven as well as he, the words that he speak because he is the Lord of heaven and he is the life uh -huh, that illuminates heaven and earth. Everything we need is in Jesus. Let me uh, 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 double down on this idea here, that salvation only comes through Jesus Christ. And, and trust me, for all my alternative thinkers on there, trust me, I, I understand it. I understand, you know, uh, different religions. I understand different different thought patterns. I, I understand uh, uh, spirituality and different views of God. But the Bible says that the only way uh -huh, to heaven, the only way to get your mansion right here in the text is through Jesus Christ. And that's why the world wants to uh, come against Christ and come against that name. That's why, the, that's why the world does not want to accept him and wants to water him down. He was just the man or he did not exist. That, that is why uh, the world wants to make him just a prophet uh, because the devil recognizes that if he can take Jesus uh -huh, out of the very idea of being the way, truth, and life, then nobody could be saved. But you ought to thank God that you can be saved. You ought to thank God that you know. You better act like you know. You better act like you know that God has made the way of salvation for you. If he never does anything else for you, he's already done enough. If he never opens up another door for us, he's already done enough. He gave us salvation and an escape route. So you want to say, how am I going to escape the, the damnation coming in this world? How am I going to escape the, 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 pan the, the pandemics and, and, and all of the natural disasters? Well, I want to tell you the way to escape is through Jesus. And that escape is not just through uh, that evacuation. It is not just through the rapture. But that same ability to escape is right here, right now. In other words, you're in the world, but not of it. And what that means is that you can escape uh -huh, the torture of the enemy and the, the, the chaos and the distress in your mind. Because in other words, he gives you a new mind. And that new mind gives you a brand new perspective. All right. What's next on the list of our evacuation plan? The next thing is you got to know the alarm. You got to know the alarm. In the city I live with, in uh, there's a there is a, a alarm that goes off, and I sh I shared this with several of you before. Uh, one day I was listening, uh, I heard this alarm going off because it had been so so many years that I'd lived in this town. But I heard this alarm go off, and I said, "What in the world is that?" But then I began to think that in 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 a, in a former life in my career when I, I worked for Chevron, uh, one of the big projects that uh, uh, I uh, worked on uh, with our team was the idea of uh, was a, a project that gets neighbors to know when something was happening at the refinery. And so that alarm was put in. And so when I heard that alarm, I said, oh, yes, that's the alarm that says uh, that an event has taken has uh, has taken place to evacuate a shelter in place uh, whatever uh, is called upon for that particular incident. So in other words, I did not, I was not confused about the alarm. I did not have to call the, the police or the fire department or uh, public works about the alarm. I knew the alarm because it had a distinctive sound. And I knew the alarm because it was designed for the people of my city. Y'all better come to church with me. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that trumpets and alarms in the Bible are very significant. The alarms in the Bible, they signify that a ceremony was to take place.
They signified that a feast was to take place. They signified that war was to take place or even that the, the, the children of Israel to, were to march from one place to another. They, they, they brought in the holy high days uh, of, of the day of atonement and, and many of the feasts in Israel. So the people were not confused about the trumpet blast. Well, what does the Bible say about us? You know, in, in my home, every now and then, my alarm goes off. In the middle of the night a few times, just phantom. Have you ever had that happen? The alarm just went off. And I tried to, to figure it out. Why did my alarm go off? But when I woke up, I wasn't trying to figure what it was. I knew what it was. I said, that is my alarm system. Why? Because I knew what to expect. Let's go to church. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord himself, talking about Jesus Christ, shall descend from heaven with a shout. There it is again. There it is again. The shout I told you in Sunday's message, I told you that the shout when, Je when uh, uh, Joshua was going around Jericho, and the Bible said, even before you blow the trumpet, I want you to shout, my God. The idea of shouting is an idea that when we shout, it is a verbal applause. Are you all hearing what I'm telling you? In other words, you thought you were just hollering out that name Jesus. You thought you were just hollering out in victory. No, when you shout, it is a verbal applause. Before the trumpet blast, the shout came. Check it out in the text. My God, you can't get this in the Bible bookstore. Before the trumpet blast comes, there's going to be a shout. In other words, it's going to be a shout that says, even before this victory happens, you might as well celebrate because victory all is already yours. When you shout, it means that you already have the victory. So check it out. When an army wins, they shout in victory. But he says for us as believers, we shout even before it takes place. Why? Because victory already belongs to us. Do I got a, a few hundred people out there but that would just just lift their voices up? Do I, got, do I got 50 people out there that would just lift their voices and shout over your situation? Because that's what's going to happen. You're going to hear a shout. And I want you ready to shout back. They say clap back. I say shout back. Uh, we are going to shout because one day the Lord's coming back. So it's no need of us uh, being uh, uh, oppressed and suppressed. There's no, no need of us of our hearts being disquieted in us. There's no need of us of, of being uh, uh, so, so in turmoil that we can't get a good shout out. I dare you to shout in your house. I know your husband or wife might think you're crazy, but I want to just, you would just shout. Your kids are going to say, mama, daddy, what's wrong? If you would just shout right over your financial situation, somebody's flipping the pages of their bills, trying to figure out how they're going to pay this. I dare you to shout. Some of you are dealing with things in your body and the doctors don't seem to have the remedy for it. Shout. You're going through some things on your job and coworkers and even your supervisors getting on your nerves. I dare you to give a victory shout. Can I keep on going here. You don't have the money to take care of some things that you really want to take care of, to start that business, to start that, that venture. I want to tell you to shout over it because when you shout, it is an applause with your mouth saying, God, it's already done. And when Jesus returns, the archangel Gabriel is going to come back with a shout signifying that it's already done. Done. I wish I could see y'all faces. I wish we were together slapping high fives and giving uh, uh, fist bumps, praising God together because the victory already belongs to you. Woo-wee. My God. So let's move on. Let's go. I got I to gotta work here. He says, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. <clears throat> then we, which are alive and remain, shall what? Be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, 
How is it going to happen? The escape plan, uh -huh, the escape route is uh -huh, through Jesus and the alarm is the trumpet of God. Are you listening? You don't have to be confused about the trumpet. <clears throat> You're going to know. Can you imagine one day we're going to be on the Quest Bible study? That would be a good time because I know you couldn't save right now because all the saved folks come to Bible study. Uh, here it is. You're going to <clears throat> one day be on the quest and all of a sudden you're going to hear a shout and then you're going to hear a trumpet. Bah, bah, and in one twentieth of a second, the blinking of an eye, according to 1 Corinthians 15, we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. We're going to be like him. Look at 1 Thessalonians. The Bible says the word caught up. That, that literally uh, means translated. Rapture. That's where we get the word rapture from. The word rapture you won't see in the Bible, but it comes from the Latin raptus. Raptus coming from the Greek, which the New Testament was written in, means to be caught up. So in other words, when we say rapture, it's just the English way of saying being caught up. So how's it going to happen? The dead in Christ are going to rise first. They're going to evacuate the graveyard. Oh, my God. My God. They're going to evacuate the graveyard. Mm. Mama and them going to evacuate the graveyard. Everybody that's going on before is going to evacuate first. Mm. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain are going to evacuate. We're going to get caught up together. And he says, comfort one another with these words. I got to roll. I'm rounding third base, y'all. What's the next thing on our, on our, on our evacuation plan? We got to establish... A meeting place. Got to establish a meeting place. And I saw Revelations in chapter 21. He says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Mm, this is some pain medicine, y'all. And there was no more sea. And, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is within, with men. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, talking about Jesus. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Check out verse number four. This is our meeting place. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon that throne and he that sat upon that throne said, I make all things new. I could preach a whole message here. And he said, write it for these words are faithful and true. And he said unto me, it is done. I'm alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the waters of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So here it is. Where's the meeting place? The new Jerusalem. Mm, the, the meeting place. <laughs> Woo, my God, y'all, I want to shout here, because that's what I'm looking for. Uh, the meeting place is the new Jerusalem. The meeting place is in the presence of God. And there he's going to wipe away every tear that you've ever, uh, you've, that you have running down your eyes and that you've ever had to cry. And he's, there's going to be no more death and there's going to be no more crying and no more sorrow. All things are passed away. All things are new. Everything new. Uh-huh. In other words, you say, Bishop, you forgot something in the evacuation plan. You, you forgot something in the evacuation plan. Uh, Bishop, you forgot what do we take? What do we take? Because any evacuation plan has to have something that you take. Don't we take some water? Uh, don't we take some, some food? Don't we take some extra clothing? What do we take, Bishop? I want to tell you, we ain't taking nothing. Why? Because all things will be new. 
I'm trying to tell you, uh huh. new from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, new body. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? New white linen robe. My God, that's what I'm looking for. It is, in, it is incredible. Everybody say new, new. Amen. Say new, new. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Tell somebody, if you, buy, if you got your loved one there, give them, a, give them a high five and tell them, I got that new, new. Amen. If you, if you buy yourself, high five yourself and say, I got that. I got that new new. I got that. I got that new home in heaven, huh? There's the meeting place. So, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, if you if you never see me again, uh, uh, I'm gonna tell you we got a meeting in heaven. If if we never come this way uh, again and and never get back uh, 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 to a certain place, um, we got a new meeting place. In other words, let everybody know. Let the kids know. Let your your family and friends know. Let your neighbors know. Say. In case of emergency, when the evacuation happens, this is where we're going to meet. We're going to meet in heaven, in the New Jerusalem. I already got a room there. Y'all know if I had my organ, I'd be preaching this up a storm right now. Amen. I already got room there. Amen. There's room for you and you room for me. We ain't got to bunk up. We ain't got to be in the same house. We ain't got to save on hotel fees. We ain't got to get a double bed. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm telling you. There's room for everybody and the meeting place if it seems like you're getting lost. If it seems like you've lost your way, if it seems like you cannot uh, uh, see your, the smoke has you clouded, you just need to remember the meeting place. And the meeting place is in heaven. Those are your six steps, but I got one more freebie. Huh? Who do you look for? Who are you looking for? When we get to heaven, when the alarm sounds and we caught up, when we get to the new Jerusalem and God wipes away our tears, who are we looking for? You say, well, I want to see my mama again, and I'm going to walk around heaven all day. You say, I want to see my dad again. I want to, I want to spend time with my child that I lost. And I want to tell you that may very well be a part of heaven. But I want to tell you before I see my granddad or I see my brother, before I see my friends that have passed away, before I see anybody else, I'm not stopping by their room, but I got to stop by the Alpha and Omega. I've got to stop by and see the beginning and the end. I've got to stop by and see the first and the last. I've got to stop by and see the bright and morning star. I've got to stop by and see the ancient of days. I've got to see the lily of the valley and the rose of Sharon. I've got to see the lion. Uh -huh of the tribe of Judah. I've got to see the Lamb of God. I've got to see Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tiskanu, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Gabor. I've got to see him for myself and his name is Jesus. I want to see Jesus before I see anybody else. Anybody shouting with me? John said it like this. He says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not. I told you this is not your home because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, evacuation, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope purifies himself even as he is pure. Brothers and sisters, we don't know how it's going to look. John only gave us a depiction based upon his limited cosmopolitan view. But he tried to explain to us that there is a city where streets are made of transparent gold. He tried to, to tell us that there's a city where there is trees, that the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nation. He tried to tell us of a city that had no more sun because the son of God, Jesus Christ, lights the city. He tried to tell us of a city that has foundations whose builder and maker is God. He tried to show us of a city of, 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 of gates and, and that were made of pearls uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. He tried to tell us of a city huh, that he could only depict in anthropomorphic terms. But I want to tell you, it don't matter. It doesn't, I don't know how it's going to look, 
But I do know like this, that when we he returns, we shall see him as he is. And that is the greatest hope of all believers. And that's to see Jesus face to face. I got to roll up out of here, y'all. Huh? Do we still sing that same song? When we see Jesus, amen. When I see the one who died for me, amen. Woo. When I see Jesus, all of my trials will be over. When I see Jesus, hey, amen. Woo. I'm sorry, y'all. Am I the only one having church up in here? <laughs> my God. God bless you. You're on the broadcast tonight and he said, Bishop, I want to see Jesus face to face. I don't want to get caught in the firestorm. I need my evacuation plan. And well, I just gave it to you tonight. You can be saved. Jesus is the way. All these other things that people are doing, whatever the, for religion and all of these faiths, I'm sure most are very sincere. But I want to tell you that the only way to salvation, the only way to, to heaven is through Jesus. If you want to go tonight, if you want to go with me, there's much room, Jesus said. You need to get ready. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. I ask you to forgive me. I believe that you died, you were buried, and you were raised again three days later. I believe that your blood is sufficient to save me. Right here and right now, Lord, come into my life and be my savior. I make a decision today to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You pray that prayer, you made the best choice of your life. Our church information for Covenant Church is right there on the screen. Get in touch with us. We'll teach you how to live the Christian life, get you baptized, teach you about the Holy Spirit. If you don't have a church home, we invite you to come connect with us. Yes, you can join our church online. Many people are, and we're so glad to have our, our e-church members from all over the country. We thank God for you. Thank God for you. Join and be connected so that you can evacuate. Amen. Wasn't that a great, great uh, a word tonight? I'm just privileged every time God gives me an opportunity to, to proclaim. And I pray that you were blessed tonight. So let us prepare our hearts for giving. Let's prepare our hearts to give tonight. Covenant Church, I want to thank you. You always reach our goals. And even in a pandemic, we're not physically together. We're, you're not under the, the watchful eye of the pastor or the deacons. You are giving and you're being faithful. And I want you to continue to do that. I know for some it is very tough. You, your business has slowed down and, and for some we're laid off and, and the, the uh, Senate and the uh, Congress, the, the, the uh, House is uh, wrangling over how much money to give. And in the meantime, you got to pay your mortgage and your rent and different things. But you said, you know what? I trust God and I place him first. And you're doing that. You're doing that. So tonight, Let's continue in that. In our tithe and our offering, if you didn't get a chance to tithe, please do that tonight. Be a blessing to the ministry. We're sending uh, food and clothes and goods all over the world, all over the world to help those that don't have a stimulus package. Amen. Several ways to give. You can give through text to give. You can give through our church website, the Cove Berkeley. Also, you can give through our uh, giving app, Secure, Secure Give, as well as you can give through Cash App. In whatever way, you decide to give, please do so. You also can send uh, the offering uh, to the church. We do have a new P.O. box, and, and uh, I want to make sure that uh, you get that if you're sending mail in. Uh, so certainly, certainly, uh, give God your absolute best because he gave you his best in Jesus Christ. Let's lift it up to God. Lift it up. Lift those hands up and let God fill it. Be obedient. Let God fill your hand till it overflows. Father, we thank you for these, your people that have uh, come on this broadcast, and not just to receive, but to give. So God, I pray for that. You give them an exponential Abrahamic blessing. That God, 
there shall be as the stars in the sky. And Father, I pray, God, that the, the word tonight has uh, caused something to leap up in us that we ever look for you as our Savior. We thank you and we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, God bless you, dear ones. We thank you tonight for uh, being with us, and I am always excited to see you. I am always to, excited to be with you. We'll be back Sunday morning uh, with our worship experience. Get ready. It's going to be an incredible time. We've got some great worship coming forward. It's going to bless you. So until then, you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you soon.